What's up? Let me show you guys why this free plugin is way better than Fruity Soft Clipper. All right, so it's called G Clip. It's a free plugin. All you got to do is go to their website and download it. You can see the website here directly on the plugin. One of the main reasons I like G Clip better is because you actually have a visual aid. So you're able to see how much you're clipping off. That's one of the main issues with Fruity Soft Clipper is the fact that um, it's the fact that you can't see what you're doing because it doesn't really have a good visual. And then also you can't control the curve of the clipping. So you're locked into the sound with the G clip. You're actually able to control the, the curve and you can go straight hard clipping if you want to, or you can soften the curve and you can get a more punchy sound um, or a more transparent sound. It gives you the option. So um, I actually have this beat here. I'm going to play it with, the soft clipper, which it's already has a baked in sound versus the G clip, which I've adjusted to the optimal settings for this master of this beat. And uh, I'm going to a B between them. And that way you guys can see kind of the difference in sound between um, using the free G clip and the fruity soft clipper. Shape for this a hit. Now, one thing to note, it has oversampling built in. If you're going to be putting something like a clipper on your master bus, having oversampling is a good way to cut down on distortion. Um, so you're going to be able to get things louder and punchier without it sounding like crap. Um, now, keep in mind, with any type of clipper, you're always going to want to put a limiter after it. And the reason um, is because most of these clippers have what you call a curve. So if you have this softness on 0%, this plugin is 100% hard clipping and nothing's getting above it. So you would probably be fine if the softness was on zero. Um, but when you're trying to bring down the distortion, um, using the softness control, it's actually gonna be letting some peaks through due to its curve. Now, Fruity Soft Clipper doesn't give you any control over this curve, right? and it's a soft clipper. So if Fruity Soft Clipper is the last thing on your master bus, when you export, you're gonna have inner sample peaks. Inner sample peaks are basically overs where you'll just have a random sound just barely hit over. And so basically you take a mastered song or a mastered beat, you pull it into another session, it's gonna be already distorted because you went above zero. Now, a good way to basically prevent the inner sample peaks will be to put a limiter after your clipper. So that's basically going to act as like a safe point. So even if you push the clipper hard, um, it's not going to go over zero, right? So that's very important. Even if you're using Fruity Soft Clipper, don't be scared to put the limiter after it. Now, the reason a lot of people are scared of the limiter is because... Well, what a limiter does is if you push into it, it's bringing your volume down of whatever sounds are pushing into it. So if you're turning your 808 up and you're like, hey, it's not punchy, I put the limiter on, it's not punchy. The whole reason is because you're hitting the limiter too hard. So to fix that, you would really just turn your whole mix down. One way you can do that is by putting an EQ before your limiter and using that to pull the volume down now i do like the fruity limiter because as you can see it has a visualizer on it so you're actually able to see how much it's doing um now one of the tricks um with the clipper is to basically use the clip function and pull it down just to shave off those peaks of your drums 
usually it'll be a snare in 808. And that's basically going to make it to where you can then turn the gain up after you've clipped it. And it's not going to be smashing into your limiter as, as hard. So you're uh, actually going to be able to get a louder beat or a louder song. Um, now, I'm kind of the opinion if you're making the beat and you're going to be putting vocals on it, you might not want to clip at all because clipping is going to bring in distortion. Um, it can even, when you clip, something can happen to where the bass hits and everything else gets turned down in volume every time the bass hits. So um, that's a problem that I see with a lot of beats is there's no transient. And that's a big thing too, is what actually makes a speaker move. So basically, if you're clipping off your transients, it's not going to move the speaker as much and it's not going to have a big of an impact. So if you really want punchy 808s, you might not want to clip. Now, in some cases, you might want to, but I'm just saying um, a, a lot of the punch will come from your transients and sometimes having a clean beat will sound better than a heavily distorted one. Um, or, you know, at least if you're going to use heavy distortion, you can use something like um fab filter saturn to distort your highs and kind of leave your low end clean and intact anyways guys if you have any questions about clipping um feel free to drop them in the comments i'd love to answer and help you guys out if you're wondering how to get your beats louder i actually have a lot of material on my youtube channel about mastering beats so anyways that's going to do it for today's video guys thank you so much for tuning in this is schaefer productions you guys have a good one